Hey GearFact friends, today we're looking at bad keyboards, keyboards that under-deliver, keyboards with stupid features, keyboards with ugly features, keyboards that deceive, keyboards that look great but deeply disappoint. Let's check out some classic examples. I have to wonder about these obscure brands and their strange model numbers that have no precedent and whether they're actually any good. I'm a little skeptical about the speakers which clearly have an artificial or fake tweeter there. Well, I have to say, that's the worst piano sound I've ever heard. Oh, clavy. Let's try that one out. That also fails to impress. Noisy in the background too as you play. What? Okay, that's a bass guitar sound apparently. Yeah, I think we're getting a pretty clear picture of the overall vibe of this keyboard. The sounds are virtually useless. <laughs> the seashore. If the ocean sounded like that, I would be worried. It's your bird. Cat. Ooh. Well, that really reduces the credibility of this keyboard even further, doesn't it? Great feeling. <laughs> Alright. So the feeling is just silence. No, I think I've made my decision. That sounds absolutely terrible. I do like that display with the nice deep blue, but there's no reason for the titles of the patches and rhythms to be scrolling across the screen like that. That's just an inconvenience. I think I've gone as far as I can go before literally throwing up with this keyboard. Meiki? Meike? Never heard of it. A lot of the voices you select will actually sound nothing like what they're intended to be or what they're said to be up here and the rhythms are sometimes just plain bizarre. I'm just going to run through a few random sounds. This sort of metallic sound uh, seems to come up a lot depending which sound you choose. There you go. Another virtually identical sound to the one we heard earlier. This is another strange thing too, a lot of the organ sounds seem to decay quite suddenly, which is a little bit weird. Even when you press the sustain effect here, it doesn't seem to sustain really at all. Going through the bass sounds really brings it home how sort of detached from reality this keyboard is. Electronic bass. Okay. Overdrive bass. 44 is synth bass. Okay, all they've done is shorten the exact same sound there. Going off these names will give you no indication of what you're going to get at all. And the weirdness continues with this circular control here. There are things like one key here which... which just allows you to play a, a tune with one key. Why you would want to do that, I have no idea. And it's only Twinkle Twinkle Little Star too, you don't get anything else. That's just weird. It sounds a bit like a primary school band just banging away on percussion instruments. Strangely catchy. Hey Gearfax geezers, I know what you're thinking right from the outset. This keyboard looks really dumb. And you're correct, it is dumb. It's really poor quality and very stupid. It is the Miles MLS668. It's very hard to operate. A lot of the sounds are repeated, a lot of the rhythms are repeated, and it just makes no sense. Let's have a listen to our default sound. That was meant to be piano. Anyway, I'll switch to voice here and we go to, well that was zero zero, so we'll go to zero one and get the next piano sound. Wow. Well, that's meant to be a piano, which it clearly doesn't even resemble, but it's a kind of a cool sound. A lot of these sounds are repeated. Well, there you go, there's an example. Number 11 and number 12 are identical. 
but no matter what you do, it all sounds dreadful. Let's zoom in a bit and have a look at these percussion keys in the middle. For some reason, the cymbal is three times louder than all the other buttons. you a Merry Christmas. Oh, Christmas tree, cradle song, and whipping horse moving food. Another old favourite. So the fun never stops. If we go to our first rhythm here, and then go to rhythm number 20, you'll find it's exactly the same. And basically it repeats like that right through the whole rhythm list. You've only really got 20 different ones. And for each title, they seem to have just chosen the rhythm that closest matches whatever's written there, rather than actually program 100 rhythms. I think the only thing that's left to do now is to zoom right in and have a close listen to Whipping Horse Moving Food. Generic keyboards, always a subject of fascination and disgust for me and anybody else with taste. Even for kids, this is just dreadful. Oh. Again, they're recycling the sound. The speakers cannot cope, even at low volume, they're hopelessly distorted. It's got record as well, let's give that a go. Playback? No, I was a fool to think that would work. At first glance, the features are nothing remarkable, and at second glance, there's still nothing remarkable. Ashton AK250. It was the DSP that drew me to this keyboard. DSP usually indicates that there are a set of effects that you can apply to your sound. In this particular case, DSP is just one thing. It's on or off. I'll see if you can hear the difference. This is off. Virtually no difference, as you can hear. And it's not just because of my camera's mono microphone. I really can hear no stereo difference, no equalization difference, no compression difference, nothing like that. All it seems to do is introduce a little bit of unwanted noise. As for the pitch bend wheel, have a close listen to this. Listen to how grainy and chunky that is. Pretty unacceptable. There's nothing here that impresses or inspires. Bell CK60 home keyboard. A rather awful. Tr it's one of those brands that you just feel like you've seen before, but you can't quite place it. And then you start to wonder, is it actually just made up to sell this particular keyboard? That's clearly a fake tweeter right there. Bass reflex hole here, which is probably just a hole in the front panel with no bass reflex trumpet of any kind. Down here we've got something like a little recess that's meant to look like it's got pitch bend or modulation or something. Completely fake and just designed for misleading the consumer really. Holes designed for MIDI, which are just blocked up. For anyone who's got any expectations at all of a home keyboard, you'll find that there's absolutely nothing for you in the Bell CK60. Are you ready for the devastating power of the Kawasaki Sound Oz music keyboard? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yes. And no matter what instrument you choose, the instrument only plays for about half a second. So you're not inconvenienced by instruments going on for longer than half a second. And you can record melodies. giving you a highly accurate reproduction in a loop. That's amazing. And what does this thing do? Whoa! Yes. A drum kit and a keyboard, all 
on the floor. Let's press the demo button. So, really raucous sounds all around and that's surprisingly loud. Let's try the keyboard out. Dreadful. And we got beats. This is our hip hop beat. Let's raise the tempo. That's a 0 out of 10 for the Zippy Mat Music Style Play Mat. I strongly recommend you don't have one of these in your house. Well there's Korg, Roland, Yamaha and there's Bass. I think we have a clear new leader in the market now in the form of Bass. That's not B-A-S-S, -S, that's B-A-S-E. Get a load of this piano sound. That is just mind blowing. 100 sounds in its list there but it repeats the same set of sounds after every 28. I believe there was one synth sound that was just... Ah, never heard anything quite like it. That is fantastic. Stereo speakers, of course, out of which seem to come the exact same signal either side. So no actual real stereo imaging effect whatsoever, but, you know, it's still just brilliant. This is the bass keyboard, MK2083S. Remember that. Remember it forever. Thanks for watching Gear Facts, friends. In all seriousness, there are a lot of things that you should be aware of and watch out for as a consumer. So please share this with anybody who you know is in the market for a keyboard so that they don't get a bad deal. I'll see you on the next Gear Facts video.